Oh God, I just yield myself into your very capable hands. And Father, I thank you right now that wisdom, revelation, it flows freely, unhindered, uninterrupted by any satanic or demonic force. God, speak to my vocal cords and think through my mind, not of me and all of you. Father, I decrease so that the word of God may increase into the ears of these your precious people. Now, I thank you right now that the Holy Spirit has a liberty to move on every household, move on every bedroom, every living room, every family room, every patio, every, every mobile device, and I declare that the Holy Spirit will have his way. And Father, we thank you right now that the word of God is incorruptible. It's an incorruptible seed, God, that goes into the, 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 the heart of man. And Father, I thank you right now that every ear is anointed to hear that incorruptible seed. Every heart is anointed to receive the incorruptible seed. And Father, we thank you right now that your word will do what it sets out to do. It will not return to you null nor void. So Father, we thank you in advance for the deliverance. We thank you in advance for the peace. We thank you in advance for the answers. We thank you in advance for the wisdom, the revelation, the knowledge. And Father, we just thank you. We magnify your name and we glorify your name. It's in Jesus' name. And the church said, amen, hallelujah, thank you, Lord. Well, let's go ahead and get into this uh, this morning. And we're going to have a good time in the word of God, amen, hallelujah. Now, I want to talk to you this morning in a context that, that, that in, in other words, I want, to, I, want to, I want to remove God from being a bailout God. A God that bails us out of stuff, a God that, you know, and, and, and there comes times when we get in over our heads and God's got to, you know, he's already in control. When he said it is finished, we, we, we live by the finished works of Christ. You know, but, but, but a lot of times we only engage God when we want God to bail us out. When we made a mistake, when we missed it, when we slipped up, we want God to bail us out. And, 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 I, and I don't want you to see God like that anymore. I want you to see God as your source. It's a very popular phrase in church, but I want you to see God as your source, 24-7, God as your source, and live like God is your source. Live like everything that comes your way, God has a hand in it. Not, and God ain't got nothing to do with cancer. God ain't got nothing to do with sickness. God ain't got nothing to do with disease. But, but as it pertains to your life and sustenance and, and provision and, and, and having this, this peace and this contentment, I want you to see God as your source. You have to see God as your source. You can't see your job as your source. You can't see your career as your source. You can't see your business as your source. You can't see your spouse as your source. You can't see your parents as your source. You can't see your grandparents as your source. You can't see your siblings as your source. You can't see the government as your source. You have to see God as your source. Now, one of the things that the Bible shows us uh, is Paul, uh, let's go to Philippians 4. Let's just go to Philippians 4. We're going to launch out uh, right there at Philippians 4. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Philippians 4, <clears throat> Paul was basically on house arrest <laughs> when he's writing this. And uh, verse 8, he says in the King James Version, he says, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Let your... Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. The Lord is at hand. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing. Be careful for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be known unto God. Verse 7. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your heart and keep your minds. Paul talked about the mind a lot in his writings. And you really want to go study that. He talked about the mind and seeing God from an internal perspective. He talked about contentment, the mind, renewing it. He talked about the mind a lot. And, and, and what he's saying here is keep your heart and your mind on Christ. Verse 8, a family, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are, 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 are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things, verse 9, those things which I have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do, and the peace of God shall be with you. Watch this, verse 10. But I rejoice in the Lord greatly, now that at the last care uh, has, of me has flourished again, wherein you were also careful, but lacked opportunity. 
Paul says, watch this now. Here's how you live in this perfect, perfect godly contentment. Here's how you start to see God as your source. Here's how you start to see God as your source. He says, he says not that I speak of respect of want. Not that I speak of respect of want. Be careful when times get tight. Be careful as a believer of hinting around to friends and family about what you need if you hadn't talked to God about it. Be careful as a believer in church. Be careful. Be on guard against spiritual manipulation in the financial arena. Where you're, 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 you're hinting around. Paul says, I didn't hint around. He said, I didn't respect the, respect the want. He said, in that time when things got tight, in that time when I was furloughed, in that time when I was laid off, in that time when I had to come, leave my job, work from home, take a pay cut, in that time, I didn't fret, I didn't worry, I learned. What did you learn, Paul? I learned that any economy, up or down, any job, high pay, low pay, any business, no contract, contracts coming in. He says, I've learned that whatever, watch this, state, whatever state I'm in, there it is again. Keep your mind and hearts on Christ and whatever state I'm in. You got to pay attention to the state you're in when your finances are high and when your finances are low and when your finances are tight. And when your finances are nowhere to be found, you got to pay attention. Okay, he says, whatever state he's in, watch this. He's trying to show us something. And if you haven't been learning during this pandemic, you're missing out on something big. Learning what? Learning about you and the provisional nature of God concerning you. He says, whatever state I'm in, to be content. Now, content does not mean to put up with. Content simply means I'm at peace at any state I'm in. To be content. Next verse. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. To be content. I know both how to abase. I know both how to abound. Everywhere, in all things, I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. Watch this. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. That is a God is your source statement. That is a godly contentment statement. That is living in godly contentment. That is a statement from Paul while he's on house arrest. It's a, that's a statement from him saying, listen, I can do all things, you know, through Christ that strengthens me. Now, here's the thing. Pay attention to Paul saying, I had something to do with it. I had something to do with it. I can do all things through this, through Christ that strengthens me. So we're a partnership in this thing, but Christ is higher. I have a hand in it. It's not, it's not by works, but I have a hand in it. I can do all things through Christ. Paul is not talking about ripping and running around. What he's talking about when he says, I can do, what he's saying is, I believe God is my source. Not, I can out, not, not that I can outwork God. It's saying, I can do. I can do simply means, I believe the word of God, and God is my source. I can do all things with God being my source through Christ that strengthens me. Christ gives him the endurance to, to, to endure up, down, low, high, high market, low market, job, no job. He says, listen, I learned whatever state I'm in, you guess what? I still can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Somebody says, I don't believe that. Well, I tell you what, here's where we get in trouble when we remove Christ from this scripture. When you remove Christ from this scripture right here, as a believer, we can get in trouble. We can stop seeing God as our source. Watch this. I can do all things through Christ. I can do all things through my job. That strengthens me. Nope. Wrong. I can do all things through my business. That strengthens me. Nope. Wrong. I can do all things through my education. That strengthens me. Nope. Wrong. I can do all things through my intellect. My intelligence, that strengthens me. Nope, wrong. I can do all things through Christ. God is my source. And I'm content knowing that God is bigger than me, and the way to walk in this perfect, godly contentment 
is keep God big and you small. You don't want to do all things through yourself. You don't want to do all things through your spouse. You don't want to do all things through your job. You don't want to do all things through your, through, through your business. You want to do all things through Christ that gives you the strength. Amen? All things through Christ that gives you the strength. Go to 1 Timothy. Hallelujah. 1 Timothy 6. Come on. We're going to move through the word of God today. 1 Timothy 6. Uh, we're going to go uh, uh, <clears throat> chapter 5. Up 1 Timothy 6, verse 5 through 10. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> now, Paul is laying out some things. Uh, we're going to go, let's, 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 we're going to move up to verse 4. Paul is laying out some things leading up to one of the most powerful godly contentment scriptures I feel that's in the Bible. <clears throat> he's, he's laying things out to him. He said, here's, here's what you don't want to. Here's how you do not want to carry yourself. He says he is proud. This person is proud, not knowing nothing. He dotes about questions, strifes of words, whereof cometh envy and strife, railings, verse 4, railings, evil surmisings, perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds, destitute of the truth. If you think God, if you think you are your source, you're destitute of the truth. Supposing that gain is godliness. Now, I'm going to pause right there. For you hearing my voice, do not think that you're more godly with more gain. Do not walk in financial pride and thinking you're highly anointed because you have more than the next man, more than the next family, better education than the next family, more reserved than the next man. No. Gain is not godliness. Gain does not define your relationship with God. Well, my God, I'm getting a contract here. I'm moving up the ranks in the job, so on and so forth. I'm gaining ground. Surely my relationship with God. No, you have a diligent hand, no relationship with God. And guess what? In the natural, you're just moving up. But God is nowhere to be found. Gain is your God. He says, listen. He says, listen. He says, he says that gain is godliness from such Withdraw yourself. To live in perfect godly contentment, withdraw ourselves. We need to withdraw ourselves from thinking we are making things happen. No, God is our source. Contentment says God is our source. He says stop thinking on those things. Get away from that kind of thinking. And I want to say this to you. The only way to get away from that kind of thinking is release. Gaining more money, gaining more savings, gaining more investments, guess what? You dig, in, you dig your heels into this. But when you're releasing towards God, you are, you, are, you are letting gain and money know, I don't care how much I gain, you will never become a golden calf in my life. Why? Because in the, in, in, in the Old Testament, God gave them all the gold. Moses left, came back, they had took the gold that God gave them and built the doggone calf with it and began to worship it. And that's what happens with gain when you don't understand that God is our source. We begin to worship our gain, worship our finances, worship our increase, worship our promotions. And, 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 and God gave us the increase. God gave us the gain. God gave us all of those things. But guess what? You don't worship the gifts. You worship the giver of the gifts, which is God. God gave you that gift to talk to people to make money. God gave you that gift to write to make money. God gave us that gift to watch kids to make money. But when you start thinking that you can do all things through, through you, that strengthens you, you begin to worship the gift and forget the gift giver. And Paul says, don't do that. He says, verse 6, he says, but godliness, underline that in your Bible. He says, but godliness with this thing called contentment is great gain. I want to point something out to you. Notice the count of gain over here. He says, verse 5, he says, supposing that that gain, 
It's a lowercase gain when God's not involved. It's a lowercase gain when gain is your God. He says that gain, he said that gain is godliness. He says, stop, stop thinking that. Supposing that that gain is godliness. He says, withdraw yourself from that kind of thinking about that gain. What kind of gain are you talking about? The kind of gain where you think you're, you, 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 you're the sole, you're the common denominator to it. The kind of gain you think that just because, you, you know, you, 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 you've moved up the ranks in, in, in your job, in the military, whatever it is, that, that kind of gain to think that it's all you. He says, that gain is lowercase. Watch this. He says, but when you have godliness with contentment, he says, it's not that gain, it's great gain. Now, I know what gain is, but God says, that kind of gain we don't want. You want great gain. How do I get great gain? You have to have godliness in your moving, in your actions, in your acquiring. You have to have godliness in that, and that is with contentment, and he says, that is great gain. Now, I had to ask myself and ask the Lord, show me what you mean when you say godliness. Let me tell you what godliness is. He says, but godliness with contentment, what is godliness? Godliness is living rich in God's ways. Not in finances. God is living, godliness is living rich in God's ways in whatever state you're in. Poor, rich, living rich. I live richly. I live richly in, I, I live richly in God's ways. God's word is my final source. God's word is my final authority. God is my source. And I live richly in that. Godliness. I live richly in how God says to live. I live richly in how God instructs me to live. I live richly in the covenant of God concerning my finances. I live richly when it comes to honoring God with my finances. He says, I believe God to my core that he's my source. And, and, and he, he says, godliness with this internal peace called contentment is great gain. And what is he saying? You're out of the equation. And God is first. And God is your source. He says, it's great gain. He says, why do we need to think like that? Verse 7 tells us, for we brought nothing into this world. Think about that. And it is certain that we won't carry anything out of it. Verse 8. Here it is. And having food, not a car. Not a certain neighborhood, not a certain size house, not a certain type purse. Having food and raiment, let us be therewith content. Think about that. He says, oh, God in this with great gain. If you can, if you can turn on your spiritual GPS and find food on the table, clothes on your back, you're living in contentment and great gain. You have godliness with great gain. What is that called? Master the basics. The reason Tom Brady and Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant and all those guys are so great, 15 plus years, and, and Tom Brady's still playing. He's not playing because of his athletic ability. He's playing because of his, number one, his football acumen, number one. But number two, he mastered the basics early on, and he has endured the fastest, the highest jumper, the strongest arms. He's endured all of those guys. Why? Because he mastered the basics. And God is saying, Paul is saying right here, and God's word says, listen, if you want this great game, make sure you have contentment and live, live, live richly in God's ways, live in this godliness, godliness and content, godliness and contentment married. Godliness and contentment together is great advancement for the believer, and I'm a firm believer that if, when, you, when you deem God as your source, pressure leaves you and financial peace enters you. So do you have food? Do you have raiment? He says, look, let us be content with those things. To me, that's a powerful statement. Why? Because he's, he's dumbing down financial life for us. Let us be content with those things. It's important. Let's see this in the, uh, in the Amplified, 1 Timothy 6, uh, uh, 5 through 10. Let's see it in the Amplified. Get it ready for me in the Passion Translation and the Message Translation. Let's see it in the Amplified. 
a perpetual friction between men who are corrupted in mind and deprived of the truth, who think that godliness is a source of profit, a lucrative money-making business. He says, withdraw from them. Withdraw from people. Let me tell you something. Any man or woman that takes a career, that takes self-rich, that takes, that takes finances and says, hey, you need to look out for you and let the church look out for themselves. I mean, look over here at this guy. That's an evil man or evil woman planting an evil seed in your ears. Why? That's an evil man or evil woman from the poor pit that uses it for profit. You see, you don't have to do that to gain in the body of Christ. You don't have to have a $5 line, $10 line, $15 line, $25 line, $100 line. Listen, point people to me and show them that godliness, living richly in my ways, is great gain. And, 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 and Paul says, I pray that it abounds to your account and mine so the same prosperity you preaching to them, receive it for yourself. You don't have to get up here and begin to create things for you to prosper. No, you as a pastor, me as a pastor, as a church leader, we have to have godliness and contentment within us for us to gain. He says, a money-making business, he says, withdraw from them. Next one. But godliness actually is a source of great gain. Watch this. A source of great gain when contentment, what kind of contentment? That contentment that comes from, that, 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 that comes from a sense of inner confidence based on the sufficiency of God. God being your source is an inner confidence based on the sufficiency of God. Listen, Paul says, I'm learning. Learning what? I'm learning the provisional nature of God. Whatever state I'm in, whether I got need, whether what I have wants, whether I don't have wants, whether I'm up, whether I'm down. He says, I've learned to be a base and a bound. I've learned to be up. I learned how to, he says, I've learned how to relate to God richly with money and without money. He says, look, and, and you, know what he, you know what Paul was developing while he was on house arrest? Confidence based on the sufficiency of God. And during this pandemic, you need to know that God is your source. Don't be so prideful that you haven't had any financial hiccups and start patting yourself on the back and start patting your financial uh, basics on the back saying, you know what, that, 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 you know, that, that, that's exactly why, man, your little $25,000 can be wiped out in one, one second. And then what? If your peace leaves when your money gets low, God's not your source. If your inner confidence leaves when your money gets low or you have to release your money, God's not your source. You are your source. Your savings accounts are your source. Listen, one of the most powerful things you can do in this pandemic, as the Lord leads you, one of the most powerful things you can do is, of course, be honoring God with the tithes and offerings. But number two, have you even sown a seed during this pandemic? Have you even sown in the land of famine? Have you even sown in the land of pandemic? In the land of panic, have you showed the world? Listen, I understand what's going on. I understand. I understand everybody else is hoarding and holding, but watch what I do, because I really believe God is my source. Not just when it's up, not just when it's COVID nineteen free. I believe it when COVID nineteen is here. I believe it when they have me working from home. I believe it when the pandemic is here. I believe it. Well, that's just a lot of talk. It's a lot of talk until you release. When you release towards God. When you release towards the kingdom, what you're saying is, God, I'm just like Paul. Whether I can abase, I can abound, whether I'm up, whether I'm down, whether it's good or bad, it don't matter to me. My countenance does not depend on these external things. I have this inner peace call, this inner confidence call. God is my source and godly contentment. Next one. For we brought nothing into this world. It is clear that we cannot take anything out of it. Listen, the grave is the great equalizer. You can have a 4,000 square foot house. You can have a $100,000 truck. But guess what? Both of you are going to have the same real estate when you breathe out your last breath, which is called the ground. It's the great equalizer. He says, so don't get caught up into those things. I'm at a point right now. I was talking to God yesterday. I said, there's this truck I want. And he told me, stop saying that to me. He said, stop saying that to me. He says, I don't deal in wants. I deal in desires. He said, I didn't say I I give you the wants. 
He said, I give you the desires of your heart. I said, oh, thank you, Lord. I said, God, I desire that truck when it's time to get it. But I promise you this, I won't lose my peace getting it. I promise you this, I'm going to make sure I'm honoring you before I even hop out there with that kind of financial obligation. I'm going to make sure that I'm, I'm, I'm doing all things through Christ, not through myself, to get this truck. I'm doing all things through Christ in my current life right now to, 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 to move forward. I'm going to do all of that before I get it. I said, so God, I designed a truck. You bring it two years from now, three years from now. He said, get your bookmarks away. Stop looking at them. And here's the thing about the truck. We could, I, I, I could walk off this pulpit right now, go to a dealership, and get that truck and not even miss a beat. I could do that. But you know what? That will be want action. God says, I'm going to give you the desires of your heart. The reason a lot of people don't have money, the reason a lot of people are in financial chaos, the reason a lot of people are in a financial pinch is because they buy all of their wants and they beg for their needs. They beg for daily raiment. They beg for the daily food and the raiment. They beg for those because they're buying all their wants that did not derive from God. It derived from a selfish perspective with no contentment, with no godly contentment. So they figure, I'm gaining. Let me go by. And that's not the way it works for a believer. Godliness, dealing richly in God's ways and contentment, inner peace, inner confidence that God is your source. He says, when you have those two things, don't ask me for wants. Don't even go buy your wants. Ask me for, your, for the desires of your heart. He says, I give those to you. And you want God to give that to you. And a lot of people buy cars just so, number one, they buy cars for the feeling the car is going to give them and for the feeling they're going to get when other people see them. And guess what? Here's one thing I know about that truck I want. The one I want, how I want it, because I'm not going plain Jane. I'm not going to shell. The one I want with how I want it, listen, I don't need to be playing no games. That baby, that, 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 that baby is calling me, but I had to stop saying I want that thing. I desire that thing, God, and I receive it in your season, your time, and, and, and I receive it with contentment. And I'm going to master making sure that you are my source and I live in perfect contentment while you're bringing that desire my way. Because I know that baby's going to cost you know, thirteen, fifteen hundred bucks a month. And I know I can't take it out of this world. I know I can't do that. But when it's a desire, God says, I give you that. I said, well, shoot, instead of me wanting it, going out here trying to, you know, do this and do that, I receive it. I just don't go and receive it. Some sinner could give it to me. I said, I receive it. I receive that desire. That's, that's, that's my desire. My dad could buy it for me. That's my desire. That's my desire. He could buy it for me right now today if I asked him. That's my desire. But that, 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 that's, that, that will be a want. But my desire, God says, let me give it to you. And when God is your source and he gives, there's no, there's no financial chaos with it. There's no financial, it, it, it's just not. It's just not. He says, for we brought nothing into this world, so it is clear that we cannot take anything out of it either. But if we have food, somebody say, I have food. If we have clothing, somebody say, I'm clothed. With these, these what? Food and clothing. With these, we will be content. But those who are not financially ethical, <laughs> financially ethical. Somebody says, I'm not stealing from my job. Will a man rob God? I make no financial moves if I am indicted by the word of God, of being financially unethical. What does that mean? You mean to tell me you're, going, you're willing to give forward 1300 to 1500 bucks a month and you're not honoring God? Derek, that would be financially unethical for you to do that. And I don't see how, Derek, you could enjoy that truck, how you could enjoy that house, how you, could, how you can even say that God is doing such a thing when you're dishonoring God with your finances. And God won't curse you for it. God won't take your house from you. But I tell you what, there's something about this spiritual inner being that we have, this, the Holy Spirit, there should be something that says, why would I extend myself for a want from the world and not be honoring God? That's a dangerous move to make. That's a dangerous move to make. You know, some people say, I want a bigger house. You get that bigger house, what you're saying is, I want to work more. Some people got bigger houses, can't even enjoy it because they're working a lot. I was thinking about this. Uh, yesterday, I was in the backyard. Me and my wife, we were working, 
in the backyard having a ball, talking, fellowshipping, dream building, uh, just, just conversating, so on and so forth. And, 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 and she walked in the house. She says, she says you know, we, we, she, said, she said, I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you uh, making this house a home. I'm, I'm proud of what you do around here and, and, and how we can enjoy what we enjoy. She said, I'm so proud of you. And she walked in the house, and boy, I was standing 25 feet tall when she told me that. I, I, I ain't know my name. I was so pumped up. That's one thing. When a wife just released encouraging words towards her man, listen, he, 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 he grows 10 feet tall right there in front of you. She said, no, my husband's five foot seven. When you talk to him like that, he's going to be 15 feet seven. He's going to grow 10 feet. And he's going to be like, oh, my God, look at that. And, I was, and, and she walked off. And, and I almost began to pat myself on the back. I said, oh, no, nope, no, nope. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. And the Holy Spirit said, you're absolutely right, but you don't have the home that you desire. I said, say what? I said, I love this place. I love this neighborhood. He said, yeah, but you, you, you really want five acres, four four-wheelers, a couple of go-karts, some mini bikes, uh, 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 a pond on the land, uh, 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 a little amphitheater back there to, 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 to just fellowship and have a good time with friends and family. You really want that. You, you really want that. You desire that. You know, that's what your granddad had. That's what you really desire. So, 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 so I began to think, OK, well, how did I get so off course from my desire? He says, because you bought a want. <laughs> he said, and it's good. It's beautiful. He said, but right now, if you could trade five acres in the country, four wheelers, a 5,000 square foot garage to put your stuff in and a house and all that kind of stuff, land for your kids and grandkids and their spouses, land enough that if your, if your son and your daughter want to put a house on that land and you all right there together, would you want that? I said, I said, I desire that. I said, Lord, I receive your prosperity for, for, for that right there. That is my desire. That is my desire over where I currently am. Although I enjoy it, 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 it was not my desire. I wanted it. It's great for us now. But my desire is that it, those acres, those four-wheelers, those go-karts, that pond to fish in, all that kind of stuff, that's my desire. And now that's where my faith is. Somebody say, you sell your house? I'm not selling my house. But I'm, I'm stating my desire to God knowing that he's my source. He says, but those who are not financially ethical crave to get rich with a compulsive, greedy longing for wealth. See, if God is going to be our source, we can't have this longing for more. Every time you turn around, you want more. Every time you turn around, you want more. You're longing for more. And what happens is you think that's your security. Compulsive, greedy longing for wealth. Here's what happened to them. They fall into temptation and a trap. That mortgage is too big for them. That car note is too big for them. They didn't see the layoff coming around the corner when they made that big commitment out of once. It's a trap. And into many foolish, harmful desires. I don't want harmful desires. I want God's desires. That plunge, plunge people. Dive in head first into ruin and destruction, leading to personal misery. For the love of money, the wrong relationship with it. If God is going to be our source, we can't love money. We have to teach people how to need money, but not love it. Need it, but not love it. Need it and have godly contentment, but never love it. Never make it your God. For the love of money, that is, well, here, when you love money, that is the greedy desire for it. The greedy desire for it. And the willingness to gain it unethically is a root of all sorts of evil. You know, some wives right now think that their husband, because they've turned the finances over to them, they barely look at them. They really think their husbands are just honoring God with the finances, or some husbands really think that their wives are honoring God with the finances. But here's the thing. If they're not, they're dealing unethical, and you need to look into it. So look, uh, if you think that this kind of believer, this is a wife or a husband talking, that I'm the kind of believer 
that want to see my savings account up, go up, 500 bucks a month, extra, greedy gain, extra, and not honor God with my tithes and offerings? You think that I want to look at the savings account rising over dealing ethically with God? If you think that, that is not who I am. God is our source. We have godliness and contentment. That is great gain. That $500 is nothing compared to dealing ethically when it comes to finances and finances towards God. Let's see the next translation. <clears throat> they add misery to many lives by corrupting their minds and cheating them from the truth. They equate the worship of God with making great sums of money. The worships of God with making great sums of money. Boy, you must be anointed. Look at that house you got. Boy, you must be anointed. Look at that car you got. No. But they add misery to many lives by corrupting their minds and cheating them from the truth. See, I'd be cheating you from the truth if I told you that you are highly anointed and prospering and because your savings account is growing, but you're not honoring God financially. You say, well, shoot, my life is still good. You know, everything is going great. Listen, let me tell you something about the seed time, harvest time. You're either self-engineering your prosperity or you're self-engineering your poverty, but you're not excluded from it. Seed time, harvest time will never cease. Uh, uh, cease. See, it will never cease. He says, Galatians 6, he says, he says look, uh, let's, get, let's, let's, let's get this straight. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever you sow, you're going to reap. Nah, that don't apply to me. Listen, you, you're dealing with a corrupt mind. He says, they had misery to many lives by corrupting their minds, cheating them from the truth. They equate the worship of God with making great sums of money. We have a profit that is greater than theirs. Our holy all of God. Somebody say godliness is the holy all of God. That you brought this 300 bucks in my hand this week from a job, from a CEO whose heart you're moving on because you're my source and they gave me this check. They, uh, you are my source, they're my resource and, and, and I'm going to honor you, God. Why? I have a holy awe of you. I have a holy awe of how you're taking care of me. I have a holy awe of how we are not lacking for anything. Holy awe of God, to have merely our necessities is to have enough. Somebody say enough. Necessities is enough. Next verse. Isn't it true that our hands were empty when we came into the world? Some people were broker than broke when they, when they came into the world and when they became born-again believers. Broken and broke. Credit tore up from the floor up. Cars with instructions. Not even $5,000 in the bank. Didn't know what a stock, a bond, real estate. Didn't know what that was. And through the word of God, watch this, and exposure from other men. They became knowledgeable, and men helped them move their lives forward. And guess what? He says, isn't it true that our hands were empty when we came into the world, and when we leave this world, our hands will be empty again? Listen, and they start to get a little money as a believer. Now, all of a sudden, let me just pull back off of honoring God. What are you doing simultaneously? You're making money your God. You, you, you're dealing in that game, not great game. You're dealing in, let me add numbers to this savings account, and I'll feel more secure. Don't do that. Honor God financially. Because of this, food and clothing is enough to make us content. Man alive. Next verse. But those who crave the wealth of this world slip into spiritual snares. They become trapped by the troubles, troubles that come through their foolish and harmful desires. Remember that truck I was talking about? I ain't going to become trapped. That, that, that truck ain't going to have no voice telling me, all right, get up and go now. All right, everybody else is off. You need to get going, buddy. Why do I need to get going? Well, if you're going to give me 800 bucks a month, if you're going to give me $10,000 a year just to ride around in this thing, if you're going to do that, guess what? I'm, it, that truck is going to control you. That house will control you when you're dealing with foolish desires. For those who crave wealth of this world, slip into spiritual snares, they become trapped by the troubles that, uh, that, that come through. They're foolish and harmful desires. Driven by greed. Listen, if God is going to be our source, we can't be driven by greed. We've got to be dri driven by generosity. When God is your source, you're not driven by greed. You're driven by generosity. And drowning in their own sinful pleasure. 
and they take others down with them into their corruption and their evil destruction. The one thing, I, 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 I have a spiritual son every time I talk to him, every time I talk to him, he's talking about what he wants to give, how he wants to give, the amounts he wants to give, who he wants to bless, how he wants to bless them. He's always talking about that. You know why he can talk like that? Because he's not driven by greed. And guess what? I am so glad that I'm not pulling him down <laughs> into my corruption and eventual destruction by saying, get more, buy bigger, that means you're blessed. No, you know me. I'm others rich. I'm kingdom rich. My wife is others rich. She's kingdom rich. Others rich. Kingdom rich. Let me tell you something. When I, when I hear... When I hear a desire, when I hear a need, when she hears a need, when we hear a need or hear a desire, you know what? We'll communicate, and it don't take much. Uh, yeah, go ahead and bless them. The birthday is coming up. Go ahead and do it. <clears throat> My God, that's over 500 bucks. You're just going to do it right here. It's, it's, it's a Tuesday. You're going to do that? Yeah. I, ain't, I, I mean, I ain't going to take this stuff with me. God gave it to me to bless folks with it and to honor him with it. Yeah, yeah go ahead and do it. We had a guy, he, says, he said, hey, I noticed so-and-so and so-and-so -so needs some equipment on, on their car. They need something on it. Here, here's what I'm going to do. What, what, take it up to the place. I, I, I want to go. I, 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 we'll, we'll, we'll pay for it for you, me and my wife. We'll, we'll go ahead and do that. Had a guy came over to my house, did, did this and did that and did that. I said, I, said, I said, what I owe you? He said, you don't owe me nothing. I said, huh? He said, you don't owe me nothing. He said, you don't owe me nothing. He, I, said, I said, my God, I'm surrounded by guys who understand. God is blessing me. And you know what? When I get a chance to be others rich and kingdom rich, I desire that. I'm not out here for a greedy gain. I say, I'm surrounded by these guys. Somebody says, you know, I, I'm, we're going to go down here and get something to eat, so and so forth. I said, shoot, well, well, let me just go in and Apple pay it. Let, let us buy your lunch. Hey, we're, we're in Home Depot. We're doing this, doing that. Hey, great to see you guys, so and so forth. Well, here's a little something on your, on your project you're working on. Go ahead and do it. What is that? Scattering. Watering. Because I know God is our source. We have perfect contentment with daily food and daily raiment. So the extra is to honor God and to be others rich. Well, my God, what about your future? We find our future, but I tell you what, if it came down to finding our future and honoring God, God's going to get honored because God's going to take care of us in our future. Amen? He's, next verse. <clears throat> Evil destruction. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Let's see it in another translation. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> if you have your notes, let's go ahead and look at this. You can take the scripture down. Let's go ahead and look at this. Thank you, Lord. I want to show you these, give you these thoughts. You can take the scripture down. I want to give you these thoughts. Thank you, Lord. Get you a pen and paper. I mean, get you a pen and paper. Thought number one, contentment comes and it remains when we simply decide to be content in whatever state we are in. We want to decide today that God is our source. We want to decide right now, right here today, listening to my voice, watching your television screen, you need to look at your spouse and tell your children, God is our source. And when that happens, contentment comes and it remains when we simply decide to be content in whatever state we are in. Number one. Number two, contentment is not just when we have conquered our circumstances. Paul says, whatever state I'm in. Not just when we've conquered our circumstances, but also learning how to live with them as God brings us out of them. It doesn't just come when I've conquered my circumstances, but sometimes you got to learn how to live with your situation while God is bringing you out. You got to learn how to live with being laid off, live with being furloughed. It's a circumstance. God is still your source. But, but we think as, as believers, we are excluded from being human. We're excluded from feelings. No, we're not. We're going to have circumstances. But this godly contentment is not just when we've conquered those circumstances, 
but learning how to live with him. Listen, there's some moms uh, at the sound of my voice. They've had a baby in the last two years and they are a new mother. And let me tell you something. Life changed drastically for them. Different circumstances. So guess what? You can't have contentment without the child. And when the child comes, you're stressed out all the time. You can't get no sleep. Give me a break. No, no. You're in a circumstance. God is going to sustain you because God is your source. Contentment comes from not just when you didn't have the child. Contentment comes when now you have that one-year-old. Now you have that two-year-old. Totally different circumstance. God is aiding you. People are aiding you. You're learning in the circumstance. Contentment comes in that too. Contentment comes when, it's, when, 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 this, when, when, when a voice is saying, this mothering thing is hard. And Lord, I need you. I need your grace. So not just when the circumstances are favorable, contentment comes. When they're not favorable and God is helping you through it, you need contentment in those times as well. And I want to say to mothers out there, you, 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 you got two kids, three kids, newborn, so on and so forth. This contentment, this God is your source I'm talking about. You need to know God is taking care of you, and you don't need to think it's odd or strange that mothering is hard. It is hard. Don't let it aggravate you. Don't let it think you're less than a mother because, man, I can't keep up. I forgot this. I, man, I, man, man, I snip right here. I kind of yell right there. I kind of frown right there. And, and it's like, okay, you, you get, in the, get, get in the room, repent real quick, get back into circumstance. Why? Circumstances were favorable when the kid wasn't here. And guess what? The kid is now here, a blessing from God, a heritage from the Lord. It's a blessing to your life. Don't you dare let the devil tell you, that, oh, my God, you're, just, just, you're a terrible mother. You can't keep up. No, it's a circumstance, and I have godly contentment. When the circumstances are favorable and when the circumstances are like, ah, it's chaotic in this house right now. Guess what? God is going to help you bring you out of that circumstance. You need to know that. The next thought. Contentment doesn't come through, doesn't come naturally. This is what we got to know about this godly contentment. It doesn't come naturally, but I'll tell you what does. Selfishness, it comes naturally. You don't believe it? You, you, you have a child, and they have company. They come over. They hadn't played with that big wheel in six months. And that, their friend grabs that big wheel. You will see them marching towards that big wheel, and they won't ask to get off. They're going to grab that handle and start putting their foot out. And what they're saying is, this is not yours. You don't have to teach a child how to be selfish. My God, we're bo- they're born with it. They're, they're, they're born with it. But I tell you what you do have to learn. I tell you what you do got to teach them. You got to teach them contentment. You got to do that. You got to teach them contentment. Well, why do you got to teach them contentment? Because it's not a natural thing. You got to learn it. Paul says, I've learned this now. And you got to tell that child, hey, 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 now. Let them play with it. What are you teaching them? Inner peace, inner confidence that God is going to take care of you. I don't know. You can play with it in six months. Let them play with it. You don't have to teach selfishness. People are masters at it. Hey, I feel like we should bless so and so and so. Man, they seem like they're doing pretty good already. I mean, hey, what about us over here? What about us over here trumps what God told you to do? My God, that's that 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 right there is selfish. But contentment is, you know what? They may have more than me. I'm content with that. God's my source. I'm gonna sow. I'm gonna sow. Listen, I was on a Zoom call uh, 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 this week. I was on a Zoom call this week, and and the person w- w- was blessing me, was blessing us, a Zoom call, a video call. And as soon as I got off that call, I said, I'm blessed. My spiritual life just moved forward one foot. I said, let me sow a seed. As I know, it was 20, 20 25 minutes on the Zoom call. But, but, but here, here's a nice little seed just for what you said. It blessed my heart. It blessed our hearts. My God, Derek, what are you doing? Brother, I'm learning how to be abased and abound. I'm learning the provisional nature of God. I am not scared of what this economy can do. I am sowing in the land of famine. She is sowing in the land of famine. We are sowing in the land of famine. Why? We have perfect godly contentment knowing that God is our source. Knowing that God is our source. Next point, based on Paul, Philippians and 1 Timothy 6. Next point. <clears throat> Living in godly contentment means that we think biblically 
at every circumstance and season of our lives. We think biblically at every circumstance and season of our lives. Hey, I just get, I got, I got laid, I, we, we just got laid off, I just got a cut. I think biblically at every circumstance of our lives. Hey, we've got to put the kids in daycare, so on and so forth. What is that going to do, do to our tithes and offerings? What do you mean what it's going to do to our tithes and offers, offerings? We think biblically at every circumstance in our lives. Why? We live in godly contentment, perfect godly contentment. God is our source. So contentment, living in godly contentment means that we think biblically at every circumstance and season of our lives. Oh, my God, we just had a kid cut back on, the, on honoring God. What? No, we think biblically. At every circumstance in our lives. You know, God is not the kind of God that, that, number one, God has no grandchildren. He's got sons and daughters. So you can't live through your parents. You got to know God for yourself. You got to know God is your source for yourself. You got to know that God, God you, this perfect, per, perfect contentment, you got to know that you've got to get that for yourself. God don't, have, God don't have no grandchildren. God says, you are my son, you are my daughter. Learn of me. Learn my provisional nature. And listen, Every season of your life, you must employ godly contentment. Well, I just had two kids, Mom. You know, this, 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 this. Every season. Well, I'm in college. I only get 400 bucks a month. Every season of your life, think biblically as it pertains to living in contentment and knowing that God is your source. Yeah, when my college gives me 200 bucks a month for work study, I tell you what, son. I tell you what, daughter. Are you thinking biblically concerning that? Because right now, you're in school, you're in a season, you need to think biblically at every season when it comes to the things, of, of, when it comes to the provisional nature of God. When you want to you, you live in this inner peace, this inner confidence that Paul talked about, he says, learn what I'm trying to tell you. Think biblically at every season of your life. Paul, you're on house arrest, man, you were just ministry. I know, different season, different circumstance, but I'm, I'm, I'm on house arrest, but I'm thinking biblically. In this circumstance, I'm in the palace, but I'm thinking biblically in this circumstance. My God, they laid you off. Now you go back to work and they, and, and they increase your pay by 25 percent. Yep. The circumstance when they laid me off, I honor God. When they lifted me 25 percent, I honor God. I think biblically at every circumstance and season in my life. That's that's living in godly contentment. That's living in godly contentment. Let's keep moving along here as we close. <clears throat> God, next point, godly, contented people. This is powerful to me. Godly, contented people never live in the, what I call, the when I, then I mode. When I get the increase, then I will be more generous. When I get the house, then I'll invite people over. When I get the car, then I'll volunteer to drive uh, to Orlando on vacation. Why? What are you saying? When I get, and you can see that I get, which is selfishness, when I get in a certain place financially, then I will be what? Be, be, what are you talking about? No. Don't live like that. God is your source. Well, when we get back, when, when, when we get back to normal things, that's when I'm going to begin to honor God. Are you serious? You are in the when I and then I'm owed. And Paul says, don't be in the when I, then I'm old. He said, learn these things wherever you are. You don't, need to, you don't have to wait to this, wait to the increase, wait to the contract, wait until, you know, more clients come and then we'll. No, no, no. What, why are you in the when I, then I'm old? Learn to be a base and abound in any state of your life if God is your source. Godly contented people never live in the when I, then I'm old. When I get, then I will be. So when you get the car, then you think you're going to look prosperous? When you get the bigger house, then you think you look more prosperous? When you get the promotion, then you feel more anointed? When you get the pay raise, now you feel more anointed? My gosh, you should have been anointed when you didn't have no job. You should have known you, you, should have known you was anointed when you didn't have no contract. Are you kidding me? That's a low way to live. When I, then I. Godly, at this point. Godly contentment, based on the word of God, godly contentment is our uncontainable source of inner joy. 
Think about that. When you understand you have, when worry tries to visit you, number one, don't worship your worries and don't worry your prayers. Don't worship your worries and don't worry your prayers. He says, <clears throat> the point is, godly contentment is our uncontainable source of inner joy, which means I'm in control of it. You're in control of yours. When you've mastered this godly contentment, when you understand that God is your source, it's, it's uncont- you have uncontainable inner joy, inner peace, inner joy, inner peace. Think about how prosperous that is. That regardless of what's going on, whatever state, whatever circumstance, whatever economy up or down, it doesn't affect you. Lose your job, gain your job. It doesn't affect you. Why? Because you live in this godly contentment we're talking about. The next thought to come out, to come out of, come out of the, the word of God today uh, is your life is always a mirror to what's happening inside of you. <laughs> Oh, boy, your life is always a mirror to what's happening inside of you. If this was money and I kept it just like this, no honoring God, no releasing, no detaching from it, no showing myself and my family and my spouse and my house that God is our source. Guess what? It's, 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 when you're like this, we know what's happening on the inside of you. When you're like this, hands wide open, liberal soul, we know what's happening on the inside of you. When you're not honoring, we know what's happening on the inside of you. You think that you're your source? We know. Listen, let's say it again. Let's read it again. Our lives are a mirror to what's happening on the inside of us. And godly contentment and this inner peace and God being our source, listen, we should see it on the outside. We should see it on the outside. We got a friend in the ministry that's, 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 moving forward and, 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 and getting the household and so forth, I can't, I can't wait to bless them. I, 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 I can't wait. <laughs> I can't wait. My God, you mean to tell me you, you, you taught them about finances and you want to bless them? Shouldn't it be the other way around? I ain't got nothing to do with that. They can do what they want to do, but here's what I got something to do with. I see ground. <laughs> I see that we have extra and we can bring joy to their lives. That's what I see. And we are turned on by this. During this pandemic, we are turned on by releasing towards God and releasing towards others. We have learned something. We haven't fretted. We haven't worried. Haven't been in anxiety. It is a beautiful thing to learn the provisional nature of God in whatever state you're in. And you get turned on. And this inner peace, this uncontainable joy, this internal peace, it begins to enter you when you realize, I don't have to make things happen. My job don't make things happen. God. The Holy One of Israel is my source. That's just a resource. Let me tell you something about sources. Sources never run out. Resources do. Sources never run out. Resources do. How do you think you drive your car around with gas? Where do you think gas comes from? The earth. The earth is its source. Never runs out. Billions of cars. Gassing up daily, every second, every hour. My God, is it going to run out? No, because it's from the earth. The earth is the source. God is the source. God is the, God is the owner of the earth. The earth is his in the fullness thereof. Sources never run out. But have you ever pulled up to a gas station and they say, we're out of gas? What do you mean you're out of gas? Yeah, we, we don't have any unleaded. What do you mean you don't have any uh, uh, regular unleaded? What, what, what are you talking about? Well, we're just a resource. And our tanks ran out. Our truck have not made it, so that is why we don't have the resource you need. But guess what? Just because the gas station doesn't have the resource doesn't mean that the source is still not producing. Sources never run out. So when you say God is your source, what you're saying is, as long as I got food and I got raiment, I'm taken care of. God never runs out. That's where I get my inner peace from. Sources never are depleted. They're never, oh, oh, you better breathe all the oxygen you can when you go outside so you can survive the night of sleep. Nope. It's oxygen in the room. It's in the car. It's when you run outside. It's when you're in your house. But guess what? If somebody has an oxygen tank, that's their resource. But guess where the oxygen is still coming from? The source. It's not running out. It's just we'll take it, put it in the tank so we can be mobile with it. You need it. Woo! 
Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. It's about 25 of these. We're not going to get through them all today. Why? There's another, there's another Sunday. <laughs> Next thought. The secret. Mm. When I talk about learning the provisional nature of God, disdaining from lustful desires, trying to impress people, here's the secret. The secret is to learn to value ourselves on our own terms unconditionally. That's what godly contentment brings. When you live in godly contentment, you, you, you can literally value, yourselves on your, value yourself on your own terms unconditionally. Why? You're not basing who you are on what kind of car you have, what kind of neighborhood you live in, what kind of truck you have, what people are going to say when they see you. You're not even basing it on that. You know what you're basing it on? You're basing it on, I know who my source is. I know how to live in godliness and contentment. I live in great gain, and I really don't have to show anyone anything because my, my joy comes from inside of here. So you can be highly anointed in, in front of people and totally just no confidence in yourself whatsoever. People can, people, see, if you don't, if you don't learn this, this contentment I'm talking about, people can compliment you, and you don't even know how to take it. Why? They believe in you. You don't. But when you employ this godly contentment, we know that God is your source. We know that God made you beautifully and wonderfully. When they say it, it's just adding to. It's a supplement of what you already know about yourself through God, and you know it unconditionally. I told a brother one time, I said, brother, I said, man, I, you know, that, that, was, that was this, 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 this. And, I, and, and he said, man, I don't, I don't. I said, my God, you're... I said, can I say something to you? He said, yeah, go ahead. He said, it's always open door. Well, people say that until their, 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 their passions are involved. I said, you're so awkward when I'm trying to give you a compliment. You are so awkward when I'm trying to tell you what I see. And then it don't know me. Oh, the reason it's so awkward to you is you don't see it. You don't feel it. You don't think this about yourself. I'm not talking about pride. But when you're doing the work of God, you should have some kind of inner belief in the word of God, inner belief that God is speaking through you. And God is speaking through your vocal cords to bless people. And when you bless people through your vocal cords that God is speaking through, and somebody says, man, you really blessed me. I said, man, you really blessed me. You said, yeah, but I, yeah, me, me, me. I'm, I'm just saying, when you, yeah, me, 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 me. I'm like, for the love of God, brother, receive. Why couldn't he receive? Because he didn't know the secret. He didn't value himself. On his own terms, unconditionally, which is godly contentment, which is great gain. And I came here today to tell you that God is your source. And godliness and contentment is great gain. And this church, our prayer for XL Church is for people to remove themselves and replace Everything that they think they're doing by the strength of their arm with Philippians 4. I can do all things through Christ. That statement is God is your source. That statement is God and sin contentment through Christ. So you see me doing things, no, it's not me. You see me doing exploits, you know it's not me. Paul says, look, I, man, I, the grace of God, I, I, you know, I did a little something. God, I, man, I, I don't even know where to start and where to end. You know what? I'd rather for you to be right there where Paul was than to sw swing way over and think I can do all things through my talent. Paul says, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. By the grace of God, I am who I am, but I know that, I have, but I know that God, it, what he was saying was, look, I, I know that I got a hand in it, but I came to a point of clarity. I can do through him. Let me give this last thought. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord. I want you to know, as of today, and we're going to preach the doggone paint off the walls next week. This series is going to bless us so much. I want you to know, I, no, I want you to know this one line. If you're ever going to be prosperous, Listen to this now. You got to think about this. If you're going to be financially prosperous, 
with God being your source, you got one or two choices. One or two choices. What are those choices? I either earn more or learn to want less. See, when you learn to want less, what you're earning turns into more than enough. But if you think you're going to be financially prosperous by wanting to make more always, listen, you can make 10 grand a month and have $9,500 worth of bills with no contentment. So here's what you do today. Here's what you decide today. Lord, I thank you for my income. I thank you for my business income. And Lord, I won't lean to my own understanding. I will continue to honor you with it. I'm a generous man. I'm a generous woman. We're a generous household. I do that. But Lord, I'm not coming to you asking you for more anymore. I'm not doing that. I just receive your goodness. I receive your daily bread. And while I'm doing that, I'm learning something. I'm learning to abase or abound. I'm learning to want less. I'm learning to want less. Because if I earn more, guess what? I got to be out there. For me to earn more, I got to be out there longer. For me to earn more, I got to work harder. Longer hours. For me to earn more, I got to give that company more of my soul. Learn to want less. Stop. Just master that first. But most people say, no, I need to learn how to make more. No, learn to want less. And let God bring desires to you, and you will not beg for your needs. Godly contentment. God is your source. You are making history as a family, as a single mom. You are in the house working, both parents, from home, Watching your kids learn, watching your kids' passion, watching your kids light up, watching them in their strengths, watching them in their, in their weaknesses, both parents at home. You're making history, but if you're discontented, you don't even see what's happening in front of you. You can't even see the goodness of God that the four of you, the five of you, the six of you are waking up together. You're working and they're learning. You're working, and they're learning. You take a break, they take a break. Family lunch on a Wednesday. Was it happening before? You're making history. But if you're not careful, you will will damn it. You will curse it. My God, when they're going back to school. Woo! I just respect those teachers now. And, and, And that's cute, and that's fine. What you're saying is, what you're saying is, you have yet to notice the value or the blessing or the history that you're making as a family, because when that window closes, guess what? You was working eight hours from home. You may go back to 12 in the building. And you're going to look back and go, boy, whew, I wish I could have those days back. Listen, enjoy it. Live in godly contentment. Know that God is your source. Confess it. Stop wanting to earn more. Learn to want less. And you will live in godly contentment. Were you blessed by the word of God? Let's just give some praise right there where you stand. Let's just honor him right there where you sit, where you stand. Let's just praise him right now. You are anointed. You are appointed. You are approved. You are anointed to prosper. You are anointed to advance. You're making the money. You got the degree. You got the house. You got the car. You got the food. You got the raiment. You're not wanting for anything. God is really blessing you. The last thing you want to do is to be stingy towards God. When you've got everything that the Bible is saying that a blessed man has, and now you turn, you turn inward with it. That's the last thing you want to do. You have, you have this contentment I'm talking about. Learn to live in it. Learn to walk in it. Learn to be a base. Learn to be a base. Just, just learn of yourself and the provisional nature of God. If you want to be born again, if you want to make Jesus Lord of your life, listen, click on the tab, and we got people who can pray the prayer of salvation with you, and Jesus becomes your Lord and Savior. If you want to rededicate your life, you know, I know this was a strong message. It's going to get stronger. 